Welcome to Inspire on the Go. This season, we are focusing on growing together. It's exciting to know that we can grow in our relationship with Jesus and friendships with one another. Daily, as we abide in Jesus and invite His Word to abide in us, spiritual growth takes place in and through our lives. So what does growing together look like for you in your life and ministry setting? Grab a cup of coffee and join the conversation. Hey, sweet friends, it's Andrea. I hope that your day is off to a great start. I am loving our slow walk through the content from Arkansas Baptist Inspire. If you were not able to be in the room, then this is a great way to enjoy the content. We've enjoyed worship, we've enjoyed teaching, and today we're bringing the panel discussion to you. The panel discussion is made up of members from the conference team. These are women who pour into the lives of Arkansas Baptist women in so many ways. You're going to get to meet them. You're you're also going to hear from them as we talk about what it looks like to flourish in the everyday aspects of life. So join the conversation, enjoy this content as we talk about flourishing in and through Jesus Christ. All right, if the conference team will join me up here, we are so excited to have a little girl time. Anybody like some girl time? We've had some of that. We're going to have a little bit more. I love to call this sanctified girl talk, right? We're going to be real. We're going to be honest, and I know it's going to honor the Lord, and so uh, I'm excited to have this team with me. I'm going to hand out a couple of these microphones. Aubrey, if you want to take one of those, and Laurie, if you want to take one of those, come on up here. All right. Right here in the hot seat, sister. All right, friends, this is your conference team. These are the ladies. These are the ladies who send greet me texts late at night, sometimes early in the morning. Uh, they pray for you, they serve you, they love you. They're from all over the state. I'm so excited that you're going to get to meet them. We have um, some talk that we're going to do around the topic of flourishing, and then we have some exciting updates to share with you as well. So let's just start, Nancy, down there with you. Tell us your name, where you're from, and I'm going to throw this at you. Re, re, you know, how long have you been on the team? I think that's kind of fun, too, to, to think about that. Well, I'm the new kid on the block. I'm Nancy Hannon. I'm at First Baptist Conway, and this is my first year to be on the all team. on the all conference team. I should get a patch. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. My name is Holly Woolbright. Um, this is actually officially my first year on the conference team, <laughs> um, and I, I served at uh, the Arkansas Baptist State Convention before this, so I got to serve um, with the conference team before. But yeah, excited about about this year. I am Amy Daniel from First Boonville, and I've been here a long time. A minute. <laughs> I've been here since the inception. Yes. I'm Gabrielle Green Fantasy. <laughs> I attend the Church of Rock Creek in Little Rock, Arkansas. This is year one for me. All right. All right. My name is Laurie or Orman, and I serve as Women's Ministry Director at First Baptist Bentonville, and I have been with this conference team since the beginning, which I think was about 10 years ago. I'm Sally Hennard. I think I'm the oldest one on here. I'm not sure, but I've, uh, I'm from First Baptist to Queen, Arkansas, and I have been on the team since the beginning. My name is Brooke Ramsey, and I am here at First Baptist Russellville. Thank you for coming. We are so glad to have you here. And I think I am on year five, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> and always as needed. She's great. Yes. Like, if, I don't have a specific job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm Andrea's gopher, so. <laughs> I'm Aubrey Duran. Um, I am, yay! Oh, that's my group. Um, I'm from Indian Springs Baptist Church in Bryant, and I've been on the team, I don't know, kind of three-ish years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll go with that. And, and Aubrey is our graphic designer. Everything that you see, Aubrey has done. So. 
I'm Tammy White. I'm from Arkadelphia at Third Street Baptist Church, and this is my second year, and I'm over the ministry project. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. I, I know you appreciate this team so much, and even as um, we're going to have some girl talk, we just need to do a quick little announcement. There are several women who still need to come in and find a seat, so if you can scoot to the center, that will help us so much. I do see, for our greeters in the back, I do see some seats that are at the top, uh, and, and those are available, but we definitely want to kind of scoot to the center, uh, let people know where seats are available. We want you to come in. We don't want you to leave. Come in, come in. Um, You are so welcome here. So we've talked about flourishing all day. Uh, Tara did an incredible job just reminding us and teaching us from John chapter 15 this morning about the pruning uh, of God and how that leads to flourishing. And then you went to your connection groups. Did you enjoy your connection group times? So good. So good. And just like, this is a great time to do a little poll. Do you want to keep doing that? Do y'all love having that in the middle of your day just to break it up and to have some real girl talk, real conversation time? And so uh, we, we love that so much. And so now we're going to continue to come around that topic. And as we come around that topic, we're going to talk about things that both help us flourish and sometimes some barriers to flourishing. And this is going to be a conversation. And so uh, everybody's going to jump in and we're going to kind of talk through a some different aspects of flourishing. The first question I'm going to pitch to Amy, Daniel, down there. Amy, whenever you think about your daily rhythms, so, you know, how you go through your day, your daily spiritual rhythms, what are some things that you incorporate into your day that help you flourish, that help you stay, you know, focused on the Lord? Yeah, for sure. So when you guys think of the word rhythm, we we tend to associate that word with music, right? So for something to be to sound good and have good rhythm, it has a pattern, correct? And that pattern has to happen over and over and over again for it to create a really good sound. Well, that's the thing with spiritual ryth- rhythm. And um, it's one of those things that I can't go to the Lord today and then decide to go to him next Thursday and then decide to pick up again with him two weeks from now. It has to be a pattern. Yes. And so for me, I mean, I, I audibly in the morning before I get out of bed, I tell, I tell my youth kids this all the time, but I audibly say to the Lord, I'm putting on your armor. Like I, before I even get out of bed, I say that. Um, are there mornings I miss it? Absolutely. But in order for me to have that good connected rhythm to him, um, that's something I audibly do. Prayer time, devotional, Bible study, all of that. But what's super important to me, and I think Andrea would say this about our entire team, is we are super, um, we are super focused on being intentional. When we're intentional in each and every aspect of our life, whether that is folding the laundry or, um, you know, doing the dishes or hanging out with friends or, you know, doing our job, whatever that may be, those are the places that I think continuing that spiritual rhythm is super important. So good, so good. And so as you think about what are your spiritual rhythms, and, you know, Tara started off by asking what, where are the areas that were flourishing, and maybe where are some areas that were not. This might be that one important step of obedience for you to begin those spiritual rhythms, to, you know, discipleship, Bible study, prayer, just getting in the Word, getting in biblical community. That is a practical, tangible takeaway that you can take, uh, putting on the full armor of God. So just we want you to be thinking about that and praying through that. Another thing that all of us have to navigate are just challenges challenges and hard seasons. And Laurie, you have been through a challenging season, and we've walked with you through that, and we have watched you, and we want to just celebrate the fact that we have watched you flourish through a challenging season. So share with everybody kind of what you've been going through and how the faithfulness of God has has been, you know, literally so present in this process. I, in uh, 2021, I began having the de- Debilitating pain in my neck. It would start in my neck and my shoulders and go up to the back of my head. And went to the doctor several times. No one really knew what was wrong. They thought it was maybe migraines, uh, attributed it to stress. Uh, just never got better. They would give me muscle relaxers and painkillers, and I would be back three weeks later saying I'm no better. Uh, after a year of that, Uh, I was diagnosed with a very rare neurological disorder called dystonia. And what that is, is it's an area of my brain that is constantly telling my neck muscles to spasm and to fire. And so it's kind of like when you have a Charlie horse in your leg, that's what my neck is like pretty much 24-7. And so 
you know, you think about living in, in pain and just humiliating that's very hard for me to hold my head uh, straight. But it is through that that I have learned in a new way how to depend on the Lord. And, you know, I know that so many times we idolize a life that is pain-free and easy and comfortable, and that's what we long for. But I heard Charles Stanley say years ago that ease, pleasure, and comfort never develop Christ-like character in our lives. And it's through the hard times that I grow the most. And so what I've learned from this is that there's been a lot of things that I've said but haven't experienced them. And one of them is that God is good. And everything he does is good. And I know that he's allowed this in my life. I don't think he caused it, but he allows it. Everything that comes through my life is filtered through his hands. And so um, I know that he could heal me just like that if he wanted to. He hasn't chosen to do that. Um, but, you know, the miracle would be that I would get healed, but I also see it as a miracle that I've come as far as I have, and there's some things that I can do to help with the pain and discomfort that I experience. So uh, it's just trusting that God is good, and he was with me. Amen, amen. And we just want to encourage you to pray for Laurie and for everyone in this room that's going through a season of hardship and challenge, just knowing that God's faithfulness is carrying and that it is often in that weakness that we discover a new strength, which is his strength, not our own. And so uh, just that, that is a big part of flourishing and knowing that goodness of God in the midst of all of that. Uh, one thing that we talked about as a, as a team is that a barrier often to flourishing is comparison, right? So we got to kind of talk about that, bring that into to the room and kind of lay it on the table because oftentimes we'll look at somebody else's life and think they're flourishing, but I'm not flourishing. And so Nancy, share your thoughts on navigating comparison uh, and how to flourish, uh, you know, by avoiding that trap. Absolutely. Um, maybe you've heard of the imposter syndrome. That was one of the things that I struggled with a lot. And that's basically saying that if you knew the real me, there is no way you would listen to a word that I said. And the longer I struggle with that, the more I would look at my life. And sometimes it was really shallow things. Like I can remember um, when I first came on staff at the church and I was going to go and walk up on stage and do the greeting. And I thought, oh my gosh, I look terrible. I mean, just so vain, like I've struggled with my weight. I just, I don't want people looking at me. I mean, sometimes it's as shallow as that. And then sometimes it's been things like, oh, look at their perfect little family with their perfect little marriage and their perfect kids. And I think sometimes as parents, it's even harder for us when we're looking at other people's children than it really is to compare our own lives. So over the years, I've, I've learned a couple of things. One of them is it's really, really hard to um, be jealous and it's really, really hard to um, feel that weight of comparison when you're constantly in a place of gratitude. So I started keeping a gratitude journal, and every day um, I start out by telling the Lord, thank you. You know, thank you for my husband, thank you for my son. I mean, and, and just little bitty things like the fact that you know, yesterday I had to do this and I didn't fall on my face. I mean, I just think if you take a moment and you look at those day-to-day -day blessings that we forget all about, um, it's really hard to feel less than when you count out all the ways that God has blessed you above and beyond. So number one is gratitude. But then I also read a book um, called, called The Hard Good by Lisa Whittle. And one of the things that she talks about is cheering for the person who has what you want. And that's hard. That is so hard. So what I try to do is I try to get to know people's stories. Because here's what I will tell you. Every person that you walk by on Sunday morning, you go, how are you doing? And they go, I'm great. How are you? And you go, I'm great. And you all, we both walk away and you go, oh, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not great. I'm not great at all. Like, if you'd ridden in the car with us, like, you know. <laughs> 
But when you get to know people beyond the surface, when you get to know people's stories, you realize we're all broken and we're all struggling and we're all people that God has blessed more than we ever deserve. So I would just encourage you to be thankful and then just kind of look below the surface. That's good. So good. So good. Anybody want to add? Yeah. So some, a mentor told me years ago that if, because of the comparison game, if you say you want something or you would like to be something or have something that some, someone else does, just think about it. You would have to take that whole thing, like everything that they had, in, had going on. We can't piece, piece together things that we want from everybody. So you're right. Everybody, there's a story behind us all. That's so good. And Brooke, Aubrey, I don't know if y'all have anything that you want to add into the comparison talk, but just wanted to put you on the spot and give you a chance here. When you think about comparison and think about just even like maybe in minister's wives role, because Mm -hmm. that's a a role that y'all both serve as ministry wives. What is just maybe just one way that y'all celebrate that role? Well, Brooke and I got to team up earlier (laughs) and we're a great pair together because we you know, we're just faking it till we make it. So <laughs> we're, we're not the professionals up here. I don't know. She is. I'm not. I'm just dragging her with me. But um, yeah, that is so true. I, we, I think pastors can struggle with this. I think their ministers' wives can, the, the their wives can struggle with this as families. Um, yeah, it's, it can get ugly, I think. And I think gratitude of just being grateful, um, for where the Lord has placed you and loving people yeah. <laughs> just yeah. for how they are. I think um, I think that's the most important thing is just loving others for you, loving your husbands for where they are, yeah. loving your family for where they are, loving your congregation for where they are, because yeah. um, that'll bring Amen. a lot of gratitude. Are you passing it to me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we both kind of talked earlier about the we didn't want the mic, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, ooh, there are there are several pastors' wives on our team here at Restaville that I have looked up to ever since we've been here, and and, and often you'll catch a couple of us saying, "When I grow up, I want to be like her." And um, you know, and one of the things that I I've done because and another thing too, when it comes to comparison, my biggest competitor is my former self mm. and where I have been before and where I'm not now. And I, you know, and that, that is, that is probably my hardest struggle. And I feel like I'm in that season now. And I was talking to Aubrey about that earlier. And she was like, well, then you're just being pruned. You're not in your flourishing and error as apparently that's what we're supposed to say now. I'm not in my (laughs) flourishing error. I am in my pruning era. And, um, (laughs) anybody else, anybody else, um, you know, but that, that's part of life. And that is how God, gets us to that flourishing part and so I have reached out to those pastor's wives that I want to be like when I grow up and just said mold me teach me help me you know how how did you get through this and I think that's another great thing that we can do when we see some woman that we want to be like just reach out and say hey can I be your friend can I (laughs) you know can I shadow you for a little while and let's let's talk and let's chat and help get me through those things so So good so good so I think we all have to just deal with that and we have to look at it you know head on for what it is and call it out and then claim the truth over it so that's so good okay we're going to talk a little bit about stepping out in faith because we know God as he prunes he calls us to step out in faith and obedience and Sally I've asked her and Holly to give their thoughts on this how does stepping out in faith and obedience lead to flourishing okay so I'm just going to Uh, go back a little bit we know the COVID thing uh, shut everything down and it changed our life I mean church was different and in my church uh, youth group all those extra things just ceased to exist well when all that got back on the table um, we you know our youth went back to having youth group and all the things and the high school girls didn't want to go and they were coming to church but they wouldn't go to youth and uh, basically what had happened was they had missed their moment they hadn't been in for two years and so when everything got back on the table 
their little sisters, their little brothers, they were all in there, and they didn't want to go back and start something new with these little shadows. Does that make sense? So they didn't go. And I overheard one of the moms of one of these high school girls saying, you know, I just wish they had something. And I thought, well. So I went and talked to the youth pastor, and I said, do you think if I did a Bible study with them that they'd want to come? And he said, oh, we've been praying somebody would step up. Because, you know, it shouldn't be their moms. They have them at home. They need people to step up to the plate. And I will just say this, and I'm not trying to offend anyone, but I'm ashamed a little bit of my generation because we raise our kids and then they leave home and we think we've checked all the boxes and we've done all the things and they're not our job anymore we need to coast out and there's no retirement plan in the kingdom Amen. Amen. and so um, I we met with them there was only three the first night and we kind of got the word around my group grew into 12 girls and every Wednesday night they come to my house and I cook them dinner and we have Bible study. Sometimes it's a movie night. We went to the K Love Christmas concert last year. That was fun. But I, I, you know, I wanted to pour into them, but they have changed me so much. I cannot even tell you. God showed me about two years ago that my season of influence was dwindling. And I'm in my 60s, and I'm telling you, you older people, <laughs> I'm talking to every one of you, there is a place at the table for you, and these kids and parents need your help, and y'all, they love you, they will love you, and they're, I'm like another grandma, they have changed my life, and when they first started coming out to the house, you know, they'd knock on the door, and I'd say, well, come on in, come on in, now they just walk in, I'm like, I'm like their grandma, you know, I'm like another grandparent to them. Um, and I just cannot tell you how what they've done for me. You know, I wanted to pour into them, but they have enriched my life. And I have these spiritual daughters that that God has given me. And I'm telling you, it's the biggest blessing. And I just love it. So yeah. I'm flourishing. Yeah. Back yes. back. So good. That's so good. So good. Yes. And as somebody who is now working with students, I'm the student ministry associate at our church. And I see that. The girls need people to look up to. They need older women who have been faithfully walking with the Lord to come alongside them and show them what it looks like to have a thriving relationship with the Lord. They need those people. So be that person. Um, For me, it starts all the way back when um, I first just knew the Lord. I came into relationship with Him. I was 13 when I really understood what it meant for that relationship to be lived out as a disciple. And it was that week I, I spent at camp that the Lord called me to himself, but he also called me to ministry, and I understood that I wanted to take place in what God was doing and that kingdom work. And so as I've grown up, uh, there's just been seasons where I've kind of just doubted what if I was actually going to be a part of, you know, what the Lord was doing. Um, even getting out of college, it was just a question I had, like, what are you going to do with me, Lord? Where do I fit? Where do I belong in your plan? And things come about, and the Lord re- reveals where we need to take those next steps. Sometimes it's an open door that I can just walk through, and sometimes it's a door the Lord leads me to that I need to kick down. And, and, and enter into and so um, wherever that may be uh, the Lord where he calls like we are to follow and so I think about just man accepting that call in the ministry and I did not expect the Lord to lead me to student ministry I, I thought I was called to to be a missionary in a foreign country and the foreign land the Lord brought me to is Benton Arkansas <laughs> so very unexpected, but as I've looked back um, just throughout that process, and you know, I'm, I'm new at this, and just seeing the Lord's hand and faithfully bringing me here, um, not only to take part in what he's doing, but for what he's done in me has been, been amazing. So good, so good, amen. And so we are encouraging you to take that step of faith and obedience, and through that, you will flourish. We have one last question, and Gabby's gonna kick it off for us. You heard her powerful testimony on the Deeper Still video earlier today. We're so thankful for Gabby and all the ways that God is working in and through her life uh, as she shares her story. But she's going to speak into uh, the topic of brokenness and pain. Uh, And so Gabby, as you think about just the, the hard work that it takes to deal with that 
sin, to deal with that shame, to deal with that brokenness. Um, how has that journey impacted you so that God's light, you know, shines through you? And then what encouragement would you give to these ladies as maybe they're facing that point of decision? Am I going to finally deal with this? When I started my uh, healing journey, I had to learn to come out of denial. There's a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms that we can normalize dysfunction. And when I learned how to flourish and began to understand those concepts, God showed me a cactus. A cactus is flourishes in a desert. The circumstances of where a cactus lives, they can go up to two years without rain because of their adaptability. In the kingdom of God, we have to learn how to be adaptable because we're not guaranteed a flowery bed of ease. My childhood origin was pain and severe dysfunction and toxicity, but through the kingdom of God and surrendering to him and being open-minded to change, God was able to help me to become adaptable. Amen. to receive God's word, to come out of pride and receive new information and allow a woman that's been there, done that, to listen to and sit at her feet and let her wisdom radiate. And through that process, you learn that suffering is a, is a catalyst for wisdom. You can't get wisdom without suffering. And through the pain and suffering, I learned that God doesn't waste the hurt. That I don't have to be shamed and hold my head down and don't feel like I can be part of God's kingdom because of my past. My past is just a threshing floor for my future because I understand the value of my salvation. Amen. Suffering can teach you the value of what it means for Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. And so now I'm bold. Yes, I had an abortion. Yes, I messed up royally. But guess what? That's my old me. I have a new name. I have a new name. I'm blessed and highly favored. And my biblical name, Gabrielle, is the messenger of God. And I plan out to live my name to the fullest potential. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right, well, I know that you want to just thank these ladies for the way they pour into Arkansas Baptist Women, the way they serve each one of you. We come to you today with a very exciting announcement uh, with a great opportunity. We have an opportunity to rebrand this conference. Uh, it has always been known as Inspire, right? Well, it is a new day, friends, and you will see on the screen that we are going to rename this conference. It is going to be Arkansas Baptist Women. Next slide conference. All right. This is who we are. We are Arkansas Baptist women, and this is our conference. And so uh, whenever you, you know, in the past, you maybe, maybe you said, hey, are you going to inspire? Now you get to say, hey, are you going to conference? And as you say that, uh, it's better tell other people who we are and what we're about, and then it also allows us to highlight our theme, all right? So like this year, our theme was flourish, and we want to we really dig into that theme, and so this allows us just to align everything according to who we are, what we're doing, and it also gives us creativity to serve you in better ways. So we did um, get rid of the old inspire page all right so that facebook page is gone and so we've created a new page and that's the screen that's going to be up next and we would love for you to follow this page today right now it would be so amazing if you just get your phone out and you go to facebook and to instagram and you type in arkansas baptist women on either one of those platforms hit follow hit share and what can happen is that by the end of the day we can have just as many followers followers as we had on that old page. But it is a fresh day. This is a fresh start. And you will see more changes as we continue to line up with the vision and the plan that God has for us. And so we're so very excited. Uh, and we're so thankful for each one of you. So be sure and take a, take a picture if you need to. 
of this so you can go and you can follow on Instagram and on Facebook. I also encourage you to follow Arkansas Baptist State Convention, the, the, the general page for Arkansas Baptist State Convention. They just posted about our new page and you can like it there and you can share it from there as well. It's just a great way for us to stay connected. As you take pictures today, and I know that many of you have had a chance to do that, we encourage you to use our hashtag, which is hashtag ARBaptistWomen. And then we will be able to find those pictures and to repost them on our page. And so it's just a great way to um, connect together and a great way to do ministry together. Are you thankful for these ladies? So thankful. Tammy, Tammy is going to pray us out and then Corey and Stephanie will lead us in a time of worship. First of all, I want all, all of us just to say thank you to Andrea because she is the heart and soul of Arkansas and Arkansas Baptist women. So, all right, let's pray. Our gracious Father, I just come to you now, and I just want to just thank you. I just want to thank you for this time that you've given us as women just to come, and young ladies, dear Lord, just to lay our burdens down at your feet. And Lord, I know there's some women sitting in this audience that maybe they haven't had a chance just to, to break down, Lord, to lay down those walls. So Lord, I ask right now in this next hour that the Holy Spirit just rain down on each one of us. And Lord, that you just fill this room and that you just touch in each and every one of our hearts, us including the leadership team. And dear Lord, I know there's so many people that came today with empty cups. Their hearts are empty. They're tired of ministry. They may be tired of being a mom, just tired of everything. So Lord, I pray that this next hour that we hear Tara as she speaks to us, dear Lord, I pray that you speak to her, that we can fill our cups that we can just leave today being a different woman, a changed woman to be more like you. You ask us to not just do more things for you, Lord, but you ask us to flourish and to be more like you. And Lord, what a wonderful day we've had to learn how to just prune our own life and how you're going to prune us to be a better Christian woman in our daily walk. So Lord, I pray for our team that's about to sing. And dear Lord, I pray that you will just rain down those words, dear Lord. Our hearts will just be open. Our minds will be, that you will just allow us to to just not think about our children that we're fixing to go home to or our husbands or getting dinner tonight or whatever that may be. And Lord, that right now in this next few moments that we just put our eyes focus on you. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for this time that we have together. and We're so blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening. I hope today's episode helps you embrace the full free abundant life that God provides. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to Inspire on the Go. If you would like more encouragement to help you grow in your faith, visit my website at andrealennonministry.org. Come back next time and enjoy another episode of Inspire on the Go. Thank you.